the Fiesta Bowl with Oklahoma State and Notre Dame. This was the early one, the early New Year's Six game. Oklahoma State wins 37-35 to over the Irish. Oklahoma State postgame win expectancy was 75%. I, I think the play that sealed the game and, and gave Oklahoma State life was the fourth and one on Notre Dame's own 39 early in the game. They were up 14 to nothing already, and they were handling business. And Marcus Freeman, or Freeman punted the ball back. And you can go at any number of different things here. You can say, well, our defense was able to handle them, so we thought we could stop them again. But Oklahoma State came right down the field. You gave them an opportunity that you didn't have to. And, again, these early, early plays are the ones that I feel like really changed the momentum in a ball game. And yeah, Notre Dame went up uh, 28-7 to or whatever it was, like second quarter, I guess. Maybe early third. I can't remember exactly when. But that right there is what gave Oklahoma State a shot in the arm. Even though they allowed more points on the back end, they still realized we can move the football on them. Like, you go down 21 to nothing, I don't know that you get that giant comeback. Like, that just seemed like the one spot in the game that that gave Oklahoma State a chance to win it, and and it was early. Uh, what were your thoughts on this one? Um, I, I thought Notre Dame looked really good early, and this is the difference between a team with a very, very young and inexperienced coaching staff and a team on the other side of the ball with a very experienced coaching staff that has seen everything. And yeah. it's one of those – Weather the storm. Notre Dame's going to come out playing just with a complete, unbelievable amount of passion and fire because they love Marcus and 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 they're so excited for him. And they did. I thought. I mean, hell, I told you guys. I don't think Oklahoma State's going to score today. I just don't. In the first, you know, quarter and a half, I felt pretty good about that. And um, it's just one of those things where Gundy let some of that passion get out and let's get into playing football. Okay, once the adrenaline dies down and we're all just playing football, now we're back in this game. And yes, we're behind, but we can make up for that. We're okay. There's enough time left in the clock and we can go about this. I, I, I thought it was a difference in experience level for, for um, you know, a head coach that's been doing it for decades and one that's been doing it for five minutes. As Spencer Sanders surprised me. Quite a bit in this one. Uh, 34 out of 51 passing, 371 yards, four touchdowns. He ran the ball 17 times for 125 yards in this. Jalen Warren did play 19 carries, 82 yards. But, man, I was shocked at how efficient Spencer Sanders was in this game. On the other side, without Kyron Williams, I I thought that the Notre Dame stable of backs was still going to be somewhat decent, right? But they came out with a complete completely different game plan and they only ran the ball 21 times for 42 yards now a part of that will it's probably because they only ran for 42 yards right they were not able to get a lot done establishing the run jack cone 38 out of 68 for 509 yards five touchdowns and one pick a, a notre dame quarterback throwing for 500 it, 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 screw that a a jack cone quarterback Throwing for 500 yards is insane to me. Yeah, like this is this may be what we're going to see from Notre Dame going forward, and it kind of lets you see what the handcuffs were like on Tommy Reese while Brian Kelly was there. I think that yeah. I think Marcus Freeman straight up said, "You know what? You call the offense. I'm gonna call the defense, and then we'll go from there." But at some point in time, there's a reason those handcuffs were there. Yes. Right? Like, this offense did not look good. This offense did not look strong. This offense did not look like they had a plan. Like, this is why you can't just say somebody is a great OC, and so they're just going to always be a great OC when the head coach is the architect of what you do. There, He knows how to fix the problems. He knows everybody else just looks at a house and sees that it's pretty. But he understands there's a foundation on that back right corner that where the ground is a little soft and we're a little weak. And so we had to go a little bit deeper and we had to bring in some bedrock and we had to do some things differently to stabilize that back corner. But nobody else knows that. Nobody else sees that. 
because they just see the OC and they just see the play calls and they just see the practices and they, they don't understand the architecture that goes into putting together a game plan for a team. All right. He just went out there and he called a bunch of plays. Okay. Yeah. And I think he called a bunch of plays for guys that, that didn't fit their skill sets. And that doesn't mean his offense wouldn't have been great. All right. And had he had Matt Corral and, 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 and Burks and, and some different talent on that offense, those play calls could have been awesome. They could have beat the hell out of Oklahoma state. He doesn't, he doesn't, he, yeah. th- this is a coaching staff that I want to see them be good. I want them to see them succeed, but they are very, very young. And at some point in time, free it would do Freeman a lot of good to bring in some old veteran who knows how to build these things yeah. as a coach. Yeah, because they, again, like you said, very, very young. It, they've got experience, but how? I don't know that they've got experience being in this position, right? Tommy Reese has never had the handcuffs off. Uh, Marcus Freeman has never but been he's in never, the head he's chair. never had to build anything from himself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, the, he had an architect to build it for him. The wide receiver for Notre Dame that I think we're going to see a lot of going forward, Lorenzo Styles, the freshman, eight car- or eight receptions for 136 yards and one touchdown. I mean, he was, he was awesome. He was targeted 10 times and caught eight of them. Mayer, like the, uh, the tight end, he was awesome. I mean, just... It, you, we we saw some fun things out of these yes. two teams. Uh, it was a fun game, and I mean, at Oklahoma some point State, in time, Notre Dame, no, Notre Dame struggled to score. Yes, yes. There, there was there's a part of the game where in the in the fourth quarter, the second half, basically the entire second half, they got one touchdown at some point, either late in third quarter, or some down fourth quarter, whatever. But that's it. Yeah, it was uh, in 20, the fourth quarter. So after they, they got, went down, they got 28 30, points. Yeah, 37 yeah. to 28. Yeah. They had so. 28 points in the first half, and it all seemed great. And all Gundy did was, like I said, weather that storm, took that whipping, go into the locker room. This is what they got. I can stop that. We can fix that. Well, and Jim Knowles. I mean, Jim Knowles was still calling the defense before he goes to Ohio State, which wily old veteran move there because they they open up with Notre Dame at Ohio State next year. At, you get the game plan for him twice. Why not? Like... <laughs> Yeah. Smart move, but Jim Knowles has done this multiple times this year. You can you can score on them early, but you ain't scoring after the half. Like that's he, right. they will adjust and they will figure you out, and that's exactly what they did in Notre Dame here. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G and any at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything dot com or Chris at winningcureseverything dot com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.